Hi, it's Dorothy Guiney with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating in real time a 12 by 12 layout featuring the Simple Stories Pet Shop collection. If you're not into real time, please mute me and use the gear icon to speed up this video. This page took about 36 minutes to create. I will be talking you through my entire thought process of creating a page two design. And that's what I call it when I create a complementary page to a page that I've already made, essentially stretching a single page layout into a double page spread. The material I'll be using comes from the Scrapbook Nerd online shop, and you will find links to the products I use and the shop below. Also, if you're tuning in May 9th to 13th, 2023, you still have time to participate in the Scrapbook Nerds International Scrapbooking Day virtual crop that took place last weekend. I am mentioning this because there are prizes to be had and tons of inspiration. And in addition to that, the page that I'm going to be stretching, that's the page on the left, that was one of the challenges in the crop. So anyway, the link to the Facebook group is below. Let's jump right in. The first thing I want to do is have a look at the page I want to stretch. So I made this one last week on YouTube and I have more photos. So I want to turn this into a double page spread. On this layout, I already have a fairly significant title. I also have journaling, so that's not necessary to repeat on the complementary page. I can, but I don't have to. Now, what I do when I have a single page and I know I want to stretch it, what I do is I save all of my scraps of paper, typically in a folded over piece of paper, just like this. So this is what I have left from the original page. You can see I have just scraps of printed paper along with some scraps of cardstock. Now, of course, I'm going to need a 12 by 12 piece of paper because this is going to be a 12 by 12 layout. So I brought in this wood grain paper, which is from Simple Stories from the Woods Collection. It's the same wood grain paper I used on the original page. And I also have five photos. This is a photo shoot of Chester looking absolutely adorable in a yellow bow tie. So of course I took tons of photos and that's what I want to document on the second page. So I have five photos here. I've matted them already in navy cardstock, which is the same cardstock I used on the original page. Now, also when I create a complementary page, I save all of the embellishments from the original page. So again, these are embellishments from the Pet Shop collection, from the cat version of the Pet Shop collection. So what I have here are some foam stickers. You can see I've cut up the sheet already. I also have some ephemera from this collection. And what I did on the original page is I did some die cutting. So you see these leaves here and this circle? These are from two different die sets from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I actually have them handy here. I may not need to dig into them because I have some leftovers from the original page, but there is one of the die sets and here is the other one. So I do have those handy just in case. I also have a little alpha book from Simple Stories. That's what I used for my title, or that's partly what I used for my title on the original page. Again, I may or may not need that. So now I'm going to clean all of this up and we're going to start creating the page two design. Now it's time to determine the page design. Now what dictates my page design always when creating a complementary page is the number of photos, the orientation of photos, and of course what I have left over from the original page. So starting with the photos here, I have five portrait style photos. So there we have it. Um, I may change up the order here, but basically I don't have much of an option on what to do with these photos. These are going to take up most of my page. Nevertheless, there's still room 
to design an interesting page to complement the page I already created. So in my case, it's going to go something like this. I may switch up the order of photos a bit. This one here, Chester is looking inside, so I'm going to have him always facing the inside. And by the way, this is Chester wearing a bow tie, but he's wearing a bow tie because he knows he's going to get some treats. So you can see here, I have a spot here. Now that is going to be where I simply put an embellishment cluster. And I'm, always, I'm also going to have to fill in this spot here as well. So looking into my scraps here, I'm gonna see what I have. Now I'm thinking here, well, obviously I have 12 inch strips. That's good because I am gonna to wanna to fill in this area here. So this is 12 inches long, but it's also wide enough to fit up here. I have some more of this as well. This one's a little bit more narrow. And I also have this as well. That's not wide enough for here. And obviously I have the cardstock here. And you can see on the original page, I do have some strips of solid cardstock here. So, Right off the bat, I know in this area, the only piece I can use is this polka dot paper. I can use the flip side, which is striped, which is really cute, but I am going to keep it on the polka dot side. Um, what I'm gonna wanna do is have it right now about the same size as those photos. So basically I'm just kind of filling in a grid here. And I guess what I'll do is use this for the middle. What I'm not liking about this right now, if you look at this, the angle of the diagonal is like this here on the original page. But when I flip this on the horizontal, the angle is different. It would have to be like this. And I know myself, that's probably going to bother me. Hmm. Um, Actually, I don't mind that because if I'm looking, it's still polka dotted. I am introducing a new paper here, but that also is introducing that off white. I kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is get out my trimmer and just trim these things down a bit right now. Oops. Let me move all this to the side. I know these photo mats are three and three quarter by five and a quarter because they are photos that are three and a half by five with mats that measure one quarter inch larger. That's good there. This has to be at five and a quarter inches. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move this to the side for a moment. So let's see how this looks. Now, what I want to do here is fill in this area. So I've already decided I prefer this. I want to know how big. I'm just going to take a pencil here. I'm just honestly, I'm kind of guesstimating right here, but that gives me an idea. And I am going to trim this down. That brings me in at about, ooh, there's a funny ridge there. Let me just cut that off. Obviously I had cut the paper on the flip side the last time. And what that gave me was, Sometimes like the side that you cut on is the nicest side. The flip side sometimes has a little funny ridge. So that's, that's what I see there. So I'm just gonna tidy that up because I know I wanna use this off-white side. And the measurement that I had, because I looked at it a moment ago, was seven eighths of an inch. So just a little under an inch, I'm gonna cut that. The 
hopefully. That's straight. Yeah, pretty good. All right, now that I have my trimmer out on the original page, you'll notice here there are some strips of these yellow and navy cardstock. I'm just going to do a few more of those because I'm probably going to repeat it on that horizontal strip. So I'm just going to do them quite narrow. I knew I did them narrow on the original page, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I will do one at one half inch. And again, I'm just guesstimating here, but I already know the, the polka dot paper is at seven eighths of an inch. So I know a half an inch is going to be smaller. All I'm doing is looking to create strips of paper that are all at different widths. And you'll see I will end up doing them at different lengths as well. That just kind of creates a little bit of interest in the border. And that's exactly what I did on the original page. Okay, so that's nice and narrow there. So I can move all of this to the side and let's see how that's going to look. I don't need this. What I need is this. All right. So I've got my grid blocks in order here. Let's just fill in. Now, I'm going to want this here. I may want it straight across. I'm not quite sure at this point. And I was thinking of having. Oh, kind of something like this. I'll get the original page out just to have an idea of what they look like side by side. Move all of this to the side. So here I have it. Yeah. Now I feel like I need more white over on this page or more off white, but what I am going to be repeating, I think, is this graph paper that's here because I don't have much of a story here. I do want to continue the story and explain why Chester is permitting us to put a bow tie on him. It's because we were giving him his favorite treat. So I am going to add to my journaling and put it over here. I'm kind of happy with that staggered a bit. I might even stagger the, yeah, I'm going to cut those all down a little bit. I just want them all to be a bit different. So I, you can see I am just just kind of playing with this. I'm just going to put a little mark here where I think I like them. That way I'll know where to trim them. And I'm also going to cut myself out a journaling box. So hang on a second here. I'm going to start by getting out my little trimmer here. Actually, there's a little tiny spot of a circle there and it's bothering me because it's so small you can't tell it's a polka dot anyway. Isn't that strange how small details can bother you? So here I go, trimming down my pieces. I also know, oh I got it, I don't even know where this one is right now. Hang on a minute. There we go. The pencil mark on the navy didn't really show up. So I have my three strips all at different widths and all at different lengths. Also, I do know that on the original page, I did ink up some of these pattern papers with some Morning Mist Versifying Clear ink. So I do plan to do that later on, but not quite yet. I want to cut out a journaling box. And what I'm going to do is get out my die cutting machine here. I have this graph paper, which is what I used on the original page. The flip side is wood grain. That's from Simple Stories. And I have these, um, these are rectangle stitch dies from my stash. So I'm just going to cut one out in a stitched die just to make it uh, a little bit more interesting, but it's totally not necessary. So this is graph paper. So I'm going to try to line these up. I'm actually going to get out some tape here. Hang on a minute. Ooh, I don't have any handy, so I am just going to have to try to wing it here. Hang on a sec. I'm not happy. 
These are a little bit bowed so they don't necessarily fall straight. That's the uh, that's just what it's like when you die cut. These plastic plates bend all the time pretty quickly. Anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold my breath, put in my plate, put it down, hoping it's straight enough. <laughs> and here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna see what this looks like now. This over here. All right, so I know right now I am going to be placing all of this here like this. Hopefully. I like the size of these. Let's just see. Yeah, I like that. You know what I'm thinking at this point here? Just to make it different a bit, I'm thinking of cutting this block a little bit smaller. I just want this block to look different than all the other blocks. Obviously it does already because it's not a photo, but I want it to be a different size. It's just going to put a little bit more attention here and make it special as an embellishment block because I'm only going to have one embellishment block on this page. So I'm going to get out that die cutting machine again and I am going to cut myself out another one of those um, rectangles. But this time I'm going to be doing it in my um, polka dot paper. Okay, so Hang on a sec. All right, that's gonna work. Again, this obviously can be cut out with a straight trimmer, but these dies have a stitched edging, so why not? I love anything stitched on a die. There you go, it's done. So I'm gonna move all this over to the side. See how that looks. And move a hitch. Okay, well, I don't need this right now because I kind of know where I'm going with this. I'll bring that page in a little bit later on when I start embellishing my page. But basically, you get the idea here. Yeah, I do like it, I really, Actually, I'm going to bring it in right now just to have a look at it. Yeah, so you can see here, I have pretty much repeated everything. I've certainly repeated the papers. I have repeated this border here with the navy and yellow strips of paper. This off-white polka dot one is different, but it brings in this off-white color here. And the polka dots kind of repeat the polka dots on a different size. I just like it, so I'm happy with that. What I'm gonna do right now is I am going to add a bit of ink here and I'm going to adhere all of these pieces to the page. So the ink I'm using is Versifying Claire by Morning Mist. Uh, it's, no, I'm sorry, it's Morning Mist by Versifying Claire. Ah, oh, anyway. Okay, so let's just, I am going to be very careful because this is smoky gray ink. I don't want it to be really prominent on this, but I just want to have the edges kind of blend a little bit darker as it's placed on this wood grain paper, just so that it looks like they kind of blend together.
All right, so that is done here. Now I am going to start adhering. I'm going to start with the photos at the bottom and then I will do the photos and block at the top and then what I will do is position the middle blocks. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I will position the middle strips of paper here. And the reason why I said middle blocks is because the way I am going to adhere these blocks down is it's the same method really. What I'm doing is I'm adhering on both ends right now and then what I will do is position the block in the middle. I just find it easier um, to get kind of equal positioning when I do it that way. I'm actually kind of eyeballing it here right now but I should get my ruler out. Isn't Chester adorable with this bow tie? I haven't brought out any clothes for him lately. He's probably really happy about that. He's sleeping right now. Sorry, he's been not sleeping in the mornings lately. All right, let's just see. I want to make sure that I have these nice and straight. All looks good to me right now. Uh, this one's going to go here. So I'm going to want this one to pretty much line up. I'm kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going in with my T-square and even though, you know, it should be perfect, I'm still going to have to come in and check because sometimes I'll do it a little bit off anyway. Let's just see. Is it pretty much the same? Yeah, I think I'm worrying about details here. I often do. Okay, same thing. I'm going to go do the other side right now. I really like how I'm repeating the navy blue photo mats on the wood grain paper because it's repeating what I already have in the frame over here. And when I am creating these complementary pages, I call them page twos, I want to add a lot of repetition. And because I'm creating a double page spread that I didn't create as a double page spread, I started with a single page layout and I'm stretching it, I'm not creating a design that flows across the two pages. What I'm relying on truly is repetition. So that's why it's important. Also, this is one of many designs that I use to stretch a single page into a double page spread. And typically for these page designs that I use, this being one of them, they are designs that can go with any page. That is what makes them so quick and simple and in my case appealing because I know I can just use this page design. It's going to go with whatever page I already created. And the fact is it's because they are simple straight line designs like basically grids. And what happens is grids, straight lines, are very easy on the eye. So what happens is um, it doesn't compete with the original page, which is more fancy, like a page like this. So there you have it. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Anyway, now I'm going to come in and create this journaling box here. Again, I just have to explain further why Chester is wearing a bow tie because most cats don't wear bow ties. That striped paper is beautiful, but I already started with the polka dots. The polka dot's beautiful too. 
Okay, so I'm just going to kind of position this in the middle. I really do like the fact that it's different than the other blocks. Often I create this design and the block is identical, but in this case I do like that it is a bit different. Now I'm going to start with my little strip of paper here in the middle. Now I know, I'm thinking ahead, but I do know I am going to be kind of creating an embellishment cluster here. And the reason why I do not mind putting down this strip of paper here is because of the adhesive I'm using. I often refer to it in my videos. It's called, uh, I don't know, it's like Easy Runner Adhesive Strip, something like that. And this adhesive is permanent, but it permits me to move things around a little bit before it becomes permanent. And the way I scrapbook, that is very, very important because I often move things around. And I do know in this case, when I create my embellishment cluster, I'm going to be wanting to tuck things underneath some elements that have already been, um, that have already been, ooh, that's not straight, that have already been adhered down. But I'm not too worried about it because the adhesive I'm using will permit me to do that. If you are using an adhesive that becomes permanent quicker, more instantaneously, um, I would hold off on adhering this strip at this point because I am going to be tucking things underneath it. And the reason why I know that is because I have done this page design over and over again. And that is true for my page two designs. There, I don't know how many I have actually, but there's probably six, maybe more, that I use over and over again. And they do look different each time. Also, um, you can get a good look at what these look like during my layout shares on my YouTube channel, Scrapbooking Quebec, that I do at the end of every month. So uh, I often share them on that uh, in that layout share. I really am liking how that's looking, so that's great. You can see how quickly this is coming together. Now what I gotta do is start embellishing here. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now, I have the two pages side by side. Often when I'm creating my page two design, my complementary page, I try to create a visual triangle across the two pages. Now in this case, this is just like one giant embellishment cluster. Um, I suppose that could be considered something. Now my plan is to create something right around here, right around the base of this journaling box. So I guess you could kind of consider this an embellishment cluster, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not even really worried about that. What I'm looking forward to, or what I'm looking to do, I should say, is basically make a repetition of this embellishment cluster only smaller. I don't want them to be the same size because you're not going to know where to look. This giant embellishment cluster here kind of directs you to this first page, which I consider basically my focal point. On this page, I put my favorite photo, and these are just photos that support my story. So that's why I want the big embellishment cluster here. But what I'm going to look for here is a repetition of that. So let's get out my embellishing here. When I create embellishment clusters, I always start with the bigger pieces. Now I have one of these left over from the original page here. It's basically, I'll show you the tool that I used. It is. I have a die set here from Elizabeth Craft Designs. You can see there's like this little film strip frame that's super cute in the collection. And there are all these different squares and they all have stitching around them. What I used for the circular element I have here is this detailed circle along with a full circle which has stitching around it. So that's what I'm going to use here. 
I also have, I may need to cut more of them. I do have the green cardstock. I have these leaves, which come from another Elizabeth Craft Design set. And you can see there's two leaves there. Well, I have a couple of them here. So I'm gonna start with that. If I need more leaves, I'll get them. Now, I don't want the full circle here. I want there to be a repetition of that. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm going to have it pop out from behind here. So what I'm going to do is actually cut this circle because let's see, do I have my little, yeah, I do. Okay. I'm going to kind of want it to come out from underneath here. I'm not going to adhere it quite yet, but I will soon. I don't want to cover up Chester's little feet. They are so darn adorable. I also have these leaves. So almost what I'm doing here is creating a diagonal design when you think of it, because I have these leaves here. That's the only spot on the page. Well, I'm going to put the leaves up here. So again, I'm, I don't want to cover up Chester. Ooh, do I want one? Do I want two? I'm not sure. I'm just going to leave one right now and we'll see how that goes. I have another one just in case. Also, what else? I want to repeat the other embellishments. I don't need a whole lot to be perfectly honest. So I've got to uh, just get out some of them. There's only one other Siamese cat in this collection and well, Chester's a Siamese. So it's I, I like if he were kind of sticking out from behind. I'm considering these leaves catnip. The die set says they are ferns, but when I look at them, they look like catnip. Um, I'm not going to repeat the title here. This has a significant title and I really do like it, but there is the word perfect. I'm gonna kind of want it to overlap there. I think maybe my cat can go a little bit underneath. I'm liking how this is looking already. By repeating the papers and creating one embellishment area, it's going to come together very, very quickly. Um, there are a few colors I would like to repeat. And number one, it's the red here. So I've got this here that's red, little heart. I've got nibbles, which is actually kind of perfect because the treat he's using is called nibbly. I just want to use that. Hang on. You may notice that my foam pieces, a lot of them are cut out. I might have mentioned this earlier in the video, but basically I do that because they're on this clear transparency. So I find it a great way to um, kind of addition different pieces. And I've used this collection quite a bit now. So it's getting down to the last pieces. I think I like that. And like I mentioned, it it does work with um, the theme, actually. I still want something here, though. Uh, let's see. Talk to the paw. That's kind of cute, too. You know what? I'm liking this. I am just going to start adhering right now and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to move this to the side. It's not too complicated here. Um, I should get out a little bit of foam adhesive. There might be a few things I want to pop up. One or two things. I'm just going to put this to the side, being careful not to cover up all of his paws. I think I'm just going to put one little branch here. If you want to see the video I created last week, the original page, I will link that up below and you will see how nicely these dies actually cut. I love them. I'm a big fan of Elizabeth Craft Design dies, so um, it's not that I'm biased, it's that they work. <laughs> and I love using tools, but I only love using them if they work. And believe me, Elizabeth Craft Design dies work. I kind of like to have the leaf, I think, overlapping the title a bit. Just by doing that, it adds a little bit of um, interest and texture. So I'm just bringing that up a bit. My kitty cat has already been adhered. So you see, I. I have a leaf over his tail. 
Ooh, it doesn't really want to stick down there. Maybe I'll add a bit more adhesive here. I hope you guys are liking this real-time video. I just thought I would do it simply because um, these are really easy and quick page designs, these page two layouts. And I find them very useful. So every once in a while, I like to come in with something practical. I, I'm not, ooh, the thing is about those foam pieces, you really can't um, move them once you've adhered them. I would like this kitty cat to be tucked, to be tucked a little bit more. So, uh oh, what am I doing here? You know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna have to not worry about them. There we go, I've got them tucked. I'm happy with that. Now I wanna put this nibbles in here. Ah, uh, let's see, I wanna tuck it behind. Oh, look, I can do it. I don't have to see nibbles, I just get a seek. What I'm really looking here is to see, well, maybe I want the nibbles, his, here we go. Um, I really wanted a repetition of the red. And actually, this kind of serves Talk to the Paw, which is a, absolutely adorable. It kind of serves as a repetition to this. This one, I think I want to put it up on foam adhesive. Okay, do I have foam adhesive? Oh, let's check, yes, I do. All right, here we go. I'm almost done here. Do you see how quickly these page twos come together? I have done this a few times on my channel as well. Actually, I did another one for the Scrapbook Nerd last fall as well. Again, the page design was completely different. As I mentioned at the beginning of this process, what determines the page design really is the photos that you have and the material that you have left over from you. I'm not sure if I like that there. Isn't that funny? I liked it before. Maybe I'll put it up a bit. Okay, make a decision, Dorothy. This is ridiculous, okay? I'm not going to press too hard, just in case I change my mind. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, I think this is done. All I'm going to do off camera is a little bit of journaling here. You'll see that in the still shots in the end, and that's basically it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. So that's it. I hope this video gave you some insight into my thought process of creating a page two design. These page designs come together very quickly in 30 to 60 minutes. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel, we would be thrilled if you did. The same thing for my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Also, don't forget to check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for these fun supplies and more. Take care and I will see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.